What's up everyone and welcome to the new redstone series in which I'll show you some cool things to do with redstone and to use in adventure maps. Uh, so let's jump right into this. Uh, the first things I'm going to be showing you are some timers. Uh, there's digital, because <laughs> there's no analog moving parts, and then there's mechanical timers. Uh, these are probably the most basic timers you can get. Uh, just a redstone torch, redstone repeater, deactivates, reactivates, one tick delay. Probably the easiest timer you can make. And moving right on, there's a programmable timer. This is usually for, uh, if you can see over there, command blocks and command block updates. Though I do warn you, this one is super lag intensive. If you use this on a server, everyone will be lagging out. Uh, and then we'll get into the more obnoxious of the timers. Here we go. This one, I hope you don't use. Both of these work as timers, but they are both ridiculously annoying. There is no reason to be using a piston update for this. But, I mean, there are options. Who knows? Maybe you are better with redstone than I am. Who knows? Uh, here's the next step. This is probably my favorite timer by far. Uh, just simple mechanical timer. Two hoppers feed right into each other. And redstone comparator saying if it's true or not as an output. And I mean, real simple. And then it's also expandable. So you can have multiple timers halting each other as they go around to produce a delay. Or you can have multiple command blocks on this. Or, I mean, really the possibilities are endless. And I guess that's it for the timers. Uh, pretty simple. Moving right along to the checkpoints. Uh, spawn points are a big thing in adventure maps. And I mean... If you don't know how to set them up correctly, you're pretty much screwed, because your adventure map just looks like crap. This is the first version of a checkpoint that does work, but I do not suggest using it. As you can see, the spawn point continuously resets, and that is this command block right here. It's just checking if anyone's within this block area, and sets your spawn point. Now obviously that's an issue. That's spamming the crap out of the players and it can cause lag later on. Um, so the next one is a little bit more difficult. It tests for a player in that area and then it sets a spawn point. Now this prevents the spam but it still has a slight issue as in every time you walk over it it will pop up and because it's set to all players within this area if you have a multiplayer adventure map and a second person comes in here it would reset your spawn point again. So, I mean, it's an alright one, I, I just don't prefer it. Uh, the last one, and slightly more complex, is the programmable uh, circuit here. This tests for a player within the block area. It then, if that's true, sets a spawn point for somebody if their spawn point score is not already set. Now, as you can see on the right-hand side of the screen over here, uh, spawn point is zero for me, and that means I have not set my spawn point. Uh, what happens is when I walk into that third red square over there, my spawn point will be updated to one and, or sorry, my spawn point will be updated and set in here, and then I will have my spawn point variable set to one. And that makes sure that every time you walk back into here, it will not ask you again. It just already said it, it won't do it again. And that's because of this scoreboard variable right here. Score underscore spawn point equals zero. And that's, it's a requirement that your spawn point has to be zero as you walk in here. And I mean, I'll do this again, set spawn point, I have a command block hidden under here. But set spawn point and it works again. And that's probably the best spawn point you can have. It doesn't spam anyone, it prevents from lagging the server out. It's preferred, but I mean everyone except for this first one is probably the <laughs> was working. Um, then move right along to slightly more difficult stuff. Using the same programmable, uh, programmable circuit I had right there. Uh, here's a message board. Uh, you probably want to have the spawn point or uh, scoreboard variables 
of the message showing so you guys can see what's happened. Uh, what's going to happen is it tests for people within this area again. It then makes sure that or it tells you that you've entered the area and then right after it tells you that it sets where your message has already been delivered. So you walk in here, you enter and it will set your scoreboard. And as you leave, it does the exact same thing. This prevents you from being spammed repeatedly. So if a multi, uh, if you're in a multiplayer server and somebody else walks into this square, uh, you won't be hit with entering area again. If you've already got the message, you're fine. And same exact programmable circuit, but in a different format. Uh, let's say you want to have survival mode implemented into your uh, adventure map. To do that, you would have the exact same circuit, just test, and there you go, and see if you're in survival mode. This will let you dig out, and who knows, maybe have something hidden, like a diamond or something. It's always useful. <laughs> and then as you walk out, you get converted back to adventure mode. And let me convert back, so make this easier. Uh, this is, I'll try to help explain this a little bit. What happens is the test for, as I explained earlier, and you get game mode changed, but only if your adventure mode is not set. So you'll go in there, it will change you to survival, and then it will change your adventure mode to zero right after, because you'll notice these are redstone repeaters, not uh, comparators. So it's one tick delay and you get a uh, variable set. And as you can see, as I walk in and out, they flip back and forth. And it's pretty much that simple. And go straight on to the next one. Now, keys and unlocking doors. This is probably the most useful thing you can do uh, to prevent people from leaving areas, entering areas, etc. Uh, you want, let's say, a boss battle, and you don't want them to go in without a key. Uh, and this is how you do that. Normally people will retexture a redstone torch or a bucket or something similar so that you can uh, toss it and pick it up while you're still in adventure mode. Uh, but as you can see, I toss that in there and the door opens. Now how does that happen, you ask? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, this little hopper here has items filled up that you cannot get in adventure mode. Uh, as character heads in this case. Uh, and it's only willing to accept one item, a redstone torch. Now you can have that set to a bucket, you can do whatever you want in this first slot, as long as there's only one. Because it happens based off how many are in this hopper. There are 21, I think, or 22 items in here right now. 23 will activate the second block and power the redstone. So, 23rd block, and the door opens. Now, this one's not that complex. <laughs> this is the basic door and key. Uh, if you want to go a little bit cooler, there's an, as soon as I set my scoreboard, so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, this door over here is wirelessly unlocked. This is more for multiplayer maps as well. Uh, you can run through here and you'll notice the door is not opening for me. But if I, let's say, ran through one of those red squares that set my unlock variable to 1, I would be able to walk right up to the door and it'd open. No issues. And I think that's about it. Uh, if anything here helped you out, let me know. Uh, put a comment below if you want me to do anything specific or have any special ideas. Um, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you really liked it.